Hi, I'm Kevin Tates, working with LMC Truck to bring you some great technical and how-to information on how to work on your truck projects. In this video, we're going to walk you through the process of replacing interior door trim panels in a 1981 through 1987 Chevy or GMC pickup. Now, to me, this truck doesn't seem like it's all that old, but 30 years have gone by since this vehicle rolled off the assembly line, and that's an awful lot of time for general wear and tear of broken parts to happen. Let's take a look. Now this truck is actually all original and it's not in that bad a shape, but we've got sun damage on the panel here. There's been some kind of a crazy repair here on the pull, the door handle, well, it's failing and the switches, they're corroded up. And down here, the carpeting, well, it's coming loose and it's moisture damaged and wrinkled up. Now this project is not difficult. On a scale of one to five, it's about a two. And you can restore the interior of both door panels in an easy afternoon. The good thing is that there's replacement parts for everything that you're seeing right here. Let's go take a look. Now the door trim panels come in different colors. We're staying with black because that's our new interior color. If you've got a basic truck, well you can install this right out of the box. It's got a factory looking grain and it's a very accurate panel. By the way, the inner window seal comes attached to the trim panel already. But look at these score lines. If you've got a loaded up truck, LMC makes it easy and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now it's probably not likely that you're going to need every single piece that we've got laid out here on the table. However, if you're starting with a project that's a bare door shell or a vehicle that's been stripped down or if you even want to upgrade your vehicle to a full load package, it's nice to know that LMC Truck has got every single thing that you'd ever hope to need to restore your project. Now let's talk about tools. You're going to need some kind of a knife to cut with, a Phillips screwdriver, I like to use a reciprocating saw and a cordless drill. Real basic stuff. This is from my toolbox, but you can also get some pieces from LMC Truck, such as this trim removal tool and this trim removal set. They're made from heavy duty nylon. There's lots of different shapes that allow you to safely remove clips and fasteners without breaking them and do it without scratching the paint. And it all starts with tearing our door down to see what it is that we need. Now this is the wrong way to remove these trim caps. Ours were broken and glued on, so it didn't matter how we removed them. But the proper way is to push them from the outside end with a small thin tool, release the clip, and gently pivot them back. Just remember not to force anything. The nylon pry tools are nice to have on hand for plastic because they have a little give to them and it won't stress the plastic that might be older and brittle. When disconnecting power window switches, make sure your battery is disconnected so you don't arc off any contacts and blow a fuse or ruin a switch. That's where a non-conductive pry tool helps as well. Just keep in mind that these parts are old and need to be handled with care. That's it. The lower carpet is its own template for drilling the holes in the new one. Hold it steady for an accurate location and use an awl or sharp screwdriver to mark the screw locations in the new panel. Then use a 1 inch drill bit to enlarge the holes for installation. The pocket sits almost exactly in line with the armrest support. So we're just going to center it up. I'm going to mark my corners, just for future reference, now we get to start cutting. This 8.5 by 11 sheet is conveniently almost exactly the same size as our trim pocket. It's going to serve as a base for a template. That's just about perfect. Now we transfer the template to the door and mark and drill the holes. Make sure your pattern and template is flipped the right way so your pocket is right side up. Start with an 8 inch pilot hole. Then enlarge the bottom holes to just smaller than the size of the push pins for the storage pocket. This will secure the pocket just like the factory did. Now we're going to make the square peg fit in the round hole with an 8 inch bit and just kind of making corners. You want to go easy on this. Take it slow. Work a little at a time. That's what you want, nice and secure. Be careful when you're marking your holes. 
that you don't go through both sides of the pocket. And I want to say as well, if you're using an original panel, just replacing the pocket, you don't need to go through the step of creating these anchor holes again. But we're using new. We want to dress it up like the original. We're ready to go. Now our push pins line up perfectly into the holes that we've drilled through our template. And I can't show you, but you're going to hear that those push pins are now perfectly located. There we go. Now all we got to do is run screws through the top and we're installed. Right out of the box, this panel is ready to install if you've got a basic truck. But if you've got a Sierra or a Silverado with a trim package on it, here's how to make that work. All the cut lines for the switches and handles, they're already molded into the panel. The round is for the window crank for a manual window. This is for the left and right window switch. This is for your door lock switch. This score line here is for the bezel for the actual door handle itself. There's all kinds of holes and markings here for your trim piece that we're going to put in. Everything is visible, everything's marked, and you've got a 100% chance of getting the components in the correct place. Our switches sit right here in the trim panel, and I always like to make a corner drill just so I don't overcut. Rather than the saw, we found that a rotary plunge tool works great for ABS plastic, which has a tendency to melt back into itself with the saw blade. Now, obviously, your openings don't have to be perfect, which is good in my case. Just make sure that your spring clips on the sides of the switches themselves have enough material to grab onto and get a good bite. First, we scored the pre-marked lines on the back side of the panel. Then, the plunge cutter cuts the center, allowing for some leverage. Finally, we use the pliers to break away the plastic on the scored lines, and that gives us the clearance we need for the new bezel. Perfect, look at that. The deluxe trim panel needs several mounting holes drilled in the door panel, and like we said, they're all clearly marked from the back. But there are some slots that need open, and the plunge tool works great for these as well. Speed nuts hold the trim piece in place and are installed onto the plastic studs on the back side of the trim, which sticks through the newly drilled hole. The new armrest pad is installed before the panel goes back on the truck and is held in place with a steel clip on the back side of the panel that slips over the stud. A long 3-8 socket works great for installing the clip. All right, now we're ready to install the trim panel back on the door. Now the interior door handle was still functioning on the truck, but look, the chrome is pitted, the stop is bent, and the rubber stop is gone, and it takes this tiny little E-clip that if you ever lose, you're messed up and it's difficult to install. So we're gonna use a new one from LMC Truck that has a nice zinc coating, the stop is in place, and it's got its own clip that you're not gonna have to reuse that E-clip, and it makes it much easier to install. So we're just gonna use a new one. And that's it. We're replacing the push pins in the trim panel with new ones from LMC Truck since ours were dry rotted and one actually broke while removing the panel. Reconnecting the window and lock switch is simple. We recommend installing the keepers just like the factory did. So these are new as well. There's new clips for the bezel. So the last step is to just replace the panel, but since we're in here and our clips are dry rotted and old anyways, we're just going to replace them with new units that we got from LMC Truck. There. So there's that. There's that. The fit of these panels is excellent and reinstalling the screws was easy since the holes lined up perfectly with the ones in the door shell. The armrest gets anchored to the support from the outside once the panel is on. All right, so the very last step is the door pull, but as you can see, it's in a different color. Don't worry, there's a very simple solution. We can show you how to color match this in just a couple of minutes. Now to color change the door pulls, we're not painting them, we're using color bond spray, which actually provides a molecular bond between the spray coating itself and the part. And I'm a painter, I like to go one step further and make sure my surface is perfectly clean. So I'm going to give it a quick wipe down with acetone and make sure that I'm absolutely sure that there's no contaminants 
on the door pull. As with any spray coating, several medium to light coats are much better than a few heavy ones. Let that sit a couple minutes and throw it on there. There we go. And what an amazing transformation over what we started with, with the crusty worn out parts that were on this truck. And we hope we've passed on some great tips so that you have an easier time restoring or replacing your interior trim panels. And don't forget, you can always go through your LMC truck catalog or go to lmctruck.com for more ideas for products and accessories and upgrades to make your truck project even better. For now, I'm Kevin Tates. Thanks for watching.